This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, I'm Cameron Harris. We love making this show available to you free of charge, and you can help keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar or by becoming one of our sponsors. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number 41. Now, today we're going to continue working on our backyard project, but we're going to be using a new group of tools, the sandbox tools, which are built specifically for modeling terrain in SketchUp, things like hills and valleys, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Let's get into it. So as you can see, we have our SketchUp model of our backyard just as we left it in our last episode, but you notice we have a lot of blank space back here behind our uh, retaining walls. Now that's because there is actually going to be a raised pathway, a raised walkway back here that we haven't modeled yet. And that's what we're gonna be working on today. Now, you'll notice that if we look at um, other ground cover that we've been working with in this model, for example, the gravel on the steps here, or the plots of earth uh, for the rose garden, we've always used completely flat faces for that. Uh, there aren't any mounds or holes or anything like that, and that's just because that's the way it actually is. And if you're modeling a house, the floor is always completely flat, and so we didn't really have to worry about that. But this upper walkway up here is going to be uh, start out fairly flat at the front here, but it's going to raise up in the back. And so that's what we're going to be working on today. Now this is something that we have not even touched on remotely in our past episode. This modeling terrain that has hills, rises, highs and lows. Now all the tools that we've worked with in SketchUp up until this point have always done, you know, very flat objects. So as you can see here we've got, you know, you know, flat faces here, a uh, patio made up entirely of flat faces. There are really no curves. The closest we've come is maybe using the arc tool or the circle tool to make these kind of curves uh, in the rose garden path. But Having curves that are three-dimensional in nature and for, you know, kind of combined to form this terrain is very difficult, if not impossible, to do with the tools that we've been working with in SketchUp. So we're going to introduce a new set of tools that are actually designed specifically for modeling terrain, and they're called the sandbox tools. Now they are built into SketchUp, but they aren't enabled by default. So I'm going to show you how to enable them first. What you're going to need to do is uh, you're going to need to go up to SketchUp in your menu bar and choose the preferences. And here we are in the SketchUp preferences. And over in the sidebar here, you see we've got some uh, various things. We covered this uh, preferences window in one of our very first episodes of SketchUp. Uh, but we're interested in this part here called extensions. And these are essentially plugins for uh, SketchUp that allow it to do more than it can right out of the box. And you can download other uh, extensions from the web, third-party plugins. I have a few in here myself. Uh, but there's one in particular that you will always have. It's built into SketchUp called the Sandbox Tools right here. You can see the creator is Google, and these are built into SketchUp. They're completely safe to use but they won't be enabled by default. They won't have this check mark, uh, this checkbox checked. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to check that box and most likely you'll have to restart SketchUp to get them to load up. But once you do that, you will then have access to the sandbox tools, which are up in the menu bar under two menus, draw and tools. And you can see if we hover over draw, we have a new category here called sandbox. And we have from contours and from scratch. We're going to learn about those. And we also, under tools, we have sandbox down here with a bunch of weird looking things. Smooth, stamp, and drape, and all kinds of weird stuff. We're going to learn what all of those do. But uh, first, I also want to point out that you have one other way to get to access these tools. Because you notice that over in our tools palette, we don't have any of these sandbox tools in here. So if you're a tools palette kind of person, you can go up to the view menu, choose tool palettes, and you can check the one next to the sandbox palette. And what that does is that actually gives you a second palette with just these sandbox tools on it. So if you want to enable that, you absolutely can. Uh, I find it takes up space and I don't use the sandbox tool all that often. So I'm just gonna close it for now and just use the menu bar. 
So let me kind of explain to you the way that the sandbox tools work. They're designed specifically to make terrain with like hills and valleys and you know very dynamic curvy three-dimensional terrain that looks very good and is very real. Now the way it does that, because remember SketchUp can't actually create curves. It can't have like a true um, circle or a sphere. It always has to be straight lines and faces. So how can you make curves? Well, you cannot fake it. The way that the sandbox tools work is you'll have, let me give you a little bit of an example here. Just real quick, I'm going to show you uh, the basic way that these things work. What you do is with the, with the sandbox tools, you have a tool that makes a big grid like this, right? And this grid is appears to be made up of just a bunch of little squares. So you might be wondering, why do I need a special tool for that? Well, if you look closely, if I triple click on it, you can see we have all the regular grid of lines, but we also have these diagonal lines running through them that are dotted, kind of dotted lines, dashed lines. That means that those lines are hidden from us, so that we can't normally see them in SketchUp, but they're there. And it basically means that each one of these squares is actually two triangles. You can see we've got a line dividing it right through here, so we have two triangles. And what that means, the reason you want that in this grid is, and what makes this grid special, is that you could grab a point in here with the Move tool and extend it up, and you can see that the, the rest of those lines are warping with it. So I could make like a small hole or a small hill here with the Move tool. This is the way that the this thing works because if I let go of that and maybe you know I'll just smooth this out a little bit and we'll learn how to do this manually over the next couple episodes but you can see here I just smoothed that part out and it looks particularly from up here the, sh the way it's shaded and everything it looks like there's a small hole there a little bit tricky to see because it's kind of tricky to show you with just the move tool but that's the way that they work it's still dealing with just straight lines, but it's a, basically a fancy way of arranging them to make it look like there's terrain there. So step one, you make the grid. Step two, you manipulate the grid. And step three, you smooth the grid so you don't see the actual lines of the grid. And then it looks like you have finished terrain. It looks really good. So let's go ahead and start working on that. We're going to start by making one of those special grids back here to fill this space here. Now, these grids, uh, you would think that it would function very much like the rectangle tool, but it doesn't. So what I'm going to do to kind of prepare to make the grid is uh, draw a couple of guidelines, because we want the grid to start out completely flat up at this level, so it's level with this uh, top step here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tape measure tool and draw a quick guideline down here, just from this edge, pull it up, like that. So now I've got this line kind of shooting across like this. Now under normal circumstances when you're drawing these grids you don't need to go through all this stuff with the special guidelines and everything if you're just drawing it you know flat on the ground like you do most faces in SketchUp. But because we're doing this slightly raised we want to give ourselves some guidelines to kind of latch on to. Because unlike the rectangle tool these grids won't stay flat when we're drawing them. So now I've got these guidelines and basically they're kind of outlining a little bit of a rectangle here that's where I want my grid to be right so now I've got this guide these guidelines in place I can start drawing this grid now where you draw this grid is up in the draw menu because you're drawing something go up to the draw menu and then choose the sandbox tool and then in there you have two options. One is uh, from contours and one is from scratch. We're going to cover this second option, which is from scratch, where you do everything in SketchUp. So go ahead and choose from scratch. And you can see that our cursor has changed into a little pencil with a little grid next to it. Now we're going to start uh, modeling this grid. Now, if this were the rectangle tool, we we could do this very easily. We could just really quick go click at this corner, drag over to the other corner, click and be done. But the grid tool doesn't work like that. Instead with the grid tool, you actually stretch out one line and then stretch out another line down here and then it creates the grid for you. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that you'll notice 
that before you start drawing, you have a different option down in the dimensions box called grid spacing. And that's basically exactly what it sounds like. When you draw the grid, uh, that controls how fine or coarse the squares that make up the grid are. And that really, you have to kind of be careful about that because you want to find a good balance between detail and speed. Because if you were to have a grid spacing of like an inch, for example, you would have a very detailed terrain, very smooth. It would look, you know, it would look amazing. The problem is you have then thousands of these little squares, which are actually even more thousands of little triangles that are all being warped and having to be rendered by SketchUp, and it will slow your model down, sometimes even crash uh, SketchUp completely. You need to be very careful about that. So avoid a grid spacing that's too high. But at the same time, you want to make sure your grid spacing isn't too low, because if it's too low, your terrain starts to look very chunky and not very real. A good starting point is a foot. If you're Particularly if you're building a, a larger terrain like this, go with a foot. If it was even larger, if you're doing like an entire field, go even bigger because you'll have a lot of squares and triangles that SketchUp is going to have to keep track of, maybe two feet or three feet. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with a foot. You can enter your own values in there, and you'll get, a, you'll get a sense pretty quickly of whether it's enough or not enough or just right. So we're going to start out by clicking at this corner here to start drawing our grid. Click once, and you can see that we're not dragging out a rectangle. Instead, we're drawing out a line with little tick marks on it, and those tick marks represent the grid. And uh, ra So rather than stretching out to this other corner, we're just going to go straight along this guideline here until we hit this point right here. We'll go ahead and click there. And now you can see we're stretching out, uh, it's giving us a sort of a ghostly outline of where that grid is going to be. So we'll go ahead and stretch all the way down here to the other side, like that. There we go. Click and now we've got our complete grid. Now one thing that I do want to point out is that the grids, the way the grid spacing works is it will only create grids, little squares in that grid that are a foot. So if your grid spacing is one foot, it won't make little six inch squares, you know, six inch by one foot squares to kind of make up for the little gaps. So you do need to be a little bit careful about that. You can see this one is a touch too small for us. In this case, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about that too much because adjusting it would require a lot of tweaking and fine tuning. We're just going to stick with this for now. But uh, just do keep that in mind. And now we're going to go up to Edit and Delete the Guides. Get rid of those guidelines. And now we have a grid ready for us to start uh, playing with. Now when you create these grids, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the Selection tool. When you create these grids, they come in grouped. Now that's fine. But if you want to model with them and you know kind of use the smooth tool on them, oftentimes you'll want to ungroup them or explode them. So go ahead and right click on it and choose explode. And you can see that it's now ungrouped it and you can see how many lines and faces SketchUp is having to keep track of. So be care be mindful of that. Just be careful. So now what we can do is we can start manipulating this into terrain. And we're going to do that by using a new tool called the Smooth tool, which is designed specifically for working with this type of grid. So now we're going to go up to the Tools menu, go down to Sandbox, and choose Smooth, which is a very odd name for a tool, but trust me, it's what we want. Go ahead and choose that, and now you've got a very, very odd looking tool here. You've got a, an icon that looks uh, kind of like a mound of dirt in the middle uh, with some arrows, and you've got this big red circle. Now here's the way that the smooth tool works. You click at a, you hover over this grid. You can see if we hover anywhere else, it doesn't do anything. It wants this particular kind of grid. And you choose a point, usually where a couple of lines intersect, that's where it's gonna snap to. And what you do is you click, let's say we click at this point here, and then you drag up and down. And you can see if we drag up, it's like we're making a small hill. It's dragging the point that we clicked is raising the most, and then the intensity of the effect kind of drops off as it gets further and further away. So we could, you know, create, you know, a big long, 
big tall hill here or squash it down a little bit more like that if you wanted to and you can see you can do some pretty cool stuff with this and now you can really start to see what exactly these terrain tools can do for you now I'm gonna hit the escape key to cancel this because you'll notice that that big red ring is the area it's going to affect you can see it's bigger than the grid at this point uh, and when you're not using this move tool and dragging things up and down you notice that in the dimensions box it says the radius and that's right now set to 10 feet. Now this is one of the other reasons that I like having a 10 foot spaced grid because you can just count very easily how big it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's an 11 foot grid. So what we could do is we could set um, maybe, oh well, a radius is half of the total diameter of a circle. So let's go with a radius of uh, 4 feet. That way it'll affect uh, 4 feet in either direction. And now we could go through and we could, you know, click at points here, raise those up, push these down a little bit, raise that up too. And you can see this is starting to look kind of like a miniature you know, valley with some hills and things like that. So you could do some really cool stuff with this. Now I'm going to leave our grid flat for now. And in our next episode, we're going to start using the smooth tool in some pretty cool ways to manipulate this terrain into giving us a nice subtle hill, kind of a grade up for our walkway. Well, I hope you found this episode useful. The sandbox tools can take a little bit of getting used to because they're very different from other tools in SketchUp, but once you get the hang of them, you can do some really cool stuff. Now, until next time, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. You can download lesson files there, check out the show notes, and view all of our past episodes. And if you have any questions or comments from me about the show, send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.